kidding, it's not new. But if you did just get a brand new laptop, you're probably looking to preserve its battery life and get the most out of it. So I have some truths, some myths, and some other fun facts about how to conserve your battery life and keeping your lithium ion battery lasting the longest as it can. So if you're ready, let's get started. So from the moment you tear off this little tissue paper for your MacBook or whatever computer you uh, do end up choosing, your laptop battery begins to die. And one common myth is that by having your computer plugged in to a power source all the time prevents your computer from even using um, it's lithium an ion battery, but it's not the case. That's what kind of makes a laptop different from a regular desktop. It is running off that lithium ion battery, whether it's plugged in or not. So essentially, when your computer is plugged in all the time, it's always trying to reach 100%, even though it's never gonna reach 100% because the computer is in use. Um, so a very similar scenario would be as if you were trying to fill up your gas tank. And the moment you turn on that ignition, your gas is depleting. Your, your car is burning off that gas. Same deal with your computer being turned on. So unless you're gonna stay at the pump and just um, you know, try and top off your gas tank all the time, it's never gonna be at 100%. So this is what makes a laptop different than a desktop. It is running off that lithium ion battery, whether it's plugged in or not. So giving your computer some time to rest and not have it plugged in, especially if it's in use, is a pretty good idea if you want to really lengthen out your battery's lifespan because it keeps it from working all the time and it gives it a little bit of a break. So by having your laptop plugged in 100% of the time, it's gonna be generating heat because it's, it's working. So if you do leave your laptop plugged in 100% of the time, if it is your main computer like your desktop, uh, chances are that it's probably gonna end up swelling over time and whether it's noticeable or not depends on how much heat it generates, but you know, it's aluminum, it's metal. Um, it, it could create swelling if a battery is working hard enough over an extended period of time. But however, there's a flip side to this. If you are doing a good amount of work, whether it's video, photo editing, um, using your computer as a second display, or even some gaming, and it's a good idea to keep your uh, computer plugged in so that it's getting the power that it needs. Um, but if you're doing just some document work or web surfing or just some video browsing, give your computer a break, give it an unplug. As long as it's within that 30 to 80% range, that really is the sweet spot for your computer's battery. Anything too low below that 30%, so one to 30%, uh, your computer is working a little harder to keep uh, its energy levels where it needs. And anything over 80% is just really uh, wearing out your battery because it's working even harder to reach the 100%. Um, even though, again, it's never gonna reach 100% because your computer's on and it's working. So there really is no straightforward percent of where your battery level should be. Um, yeah, ideally around 50% would be ideal, but the moment you start using your computer, it's gonna go a little lower. The moment you start charging your computer, it's gonna go a little higher. Um, and if you really try and manage it too much, you're just gonna go a little uh, crazy. Uh, but one thing you can manage is what kind of power block you are using. Uh, so I have three power blocks here. Uh, so the MacBook Air typically runs off of a 30 watt charger. Uh, if you do have the 13 inch MacBook Pro, that is a 61 um, watt charger. And then if you have the beast of the 16 inch MacBook Pro, that comes in with a whopping 96 watt charger. Um, and I have noticed on my 16 inch MacBook Pro, if I try to use any of these other chargers for whatever reason, just uh, depending where I'm in the house, it, it just doesn't keep up. I feel like it drains the battery even more so um, than if it were not plugged in at all. Um, so really using the charging brick that comes with your computer is essentially ideal. You don't wanna uh, wear out your battery because it's trying to suck up more uh, energy than it needs. Um, and it, you also don't wanna overpower it with 96 watt if you're just running a MacBook Pro because that could really just burn out the battery uh, in itself. Um, again, don't drive yourself too crazy. You know, if you, you need to charge and you have a charging block in the living room, but yours is upstairs, um, a one-time thing isn't gonna kill it. Um, but over an extended period of time, yeah, for sure, definitely using the right charging brick that comes with your computer um, would be ideal. 
So when you are done using your laptop uh, for the day, just make sure to power it down. Yeah, give it a charge for an hour or so. Before bed, just making sure you unplug it so it's not trying to constantly get a charge for all overnight for that eight to 10 hours uh, that you are sleeping. So it's not constantly pumping electricity, pumping battery, pumping juice into your computer that it does not need. Um, again, that'll make your battery work all night long and it does not need to work if your computer is not essentially working. Uh, this approach is very similar to what Apple did with the iOS 12 update where your iPhone kind of gets to know your routine and it starts, stops to charge um, overnight at that 80% spot and by base of what time you set your alarm, um, it'll cap it off so that you have 100% battery for the rest of the day, but it was not charging all night long. That um, in turn really preserves your battery life. Um, it keeps the iPhone lasting a little longer and it keeps it from bogging down because once your battery starts uh, wearing out, the entire performance of your computer will also start uh, to notice a difference. This maximizing a battery life and performance might seem like a hassle, and that's because it is. This added level of awareness is worth the bogging down of your MacBook's performance and speed due to battery throttling and the premature need of a battery replacement. That essentially is up to you, but with Catalina 10.5, there are a number of battery management and energy saving tips to cover, and more on the way with macOS Big Sur. And if you are experiencing uh, bogging down of your MacBook's performance speed due to these high cycle counts, that was what we referenced to earlier, uh, which is just battery throttling. Um, and that essentially is just your computer slowing down so that your battery uh, gets the maximum use. But if you are curious as to how your current battery health measures up, go to your Apple icon about this Mac, system report, hardware, and go down to power, health information, and just scroll down to cycle count. And if you are experiencing a bogging down of your MacBook speed to the high cycle counts, you might be experiencing MacBook throttling. This is what Apple says is a safety precaution that is built in to avoid that overheating we previously discussed that also leads to swelling of your enclosure. And then due to the iPhone controversy that happened in 2018, that battery preservance is totally up to you. To change this, just simply go into the settings menu, energy saver, open up the padlock, and just look at whether uh, your battery health management is checked or unchecked. Um, and again, that's where the option is up to you. And then sometimes there's applications running in the background that are using significant amounts of battery. Uh, so just to view that, just go up to your battery icon um, and it'll just kind of display which applications are running that are using a significant source of power. Um, and if they're not being used, just shut them off to, in order to conserve that battery life and just get it lasting a little longer for you. A battery replacement is inevitable. That is, unless you replace your laptop first. But if you do experience a little bit of bogging down within the first year due to the battery life, Apple will swap it out uh, for no cost due to the one year limited warranty. And if you do have Apple Care, um, you have a battery replacement for up to three years. But if you do fall short of both those warranties, a battery replacement for a 16 inch MacBook Pro or the 15 inch if you have the 15 inch will be $199 uh, and 129 for the 13 inches and that includes the Pro and the MacBook Air. And this might go without saying, uh, but just be really responsible about how you dispose of any batteries, whether it's a MacBook battery or any other battery. Uh, if you bring any batteries to Apple, they'll dispose of it for free and recycle it uh, responsibly. But regardless of the block size, uh, Apple's USB-C to USB-C cord is a little lengthy. Um, and you really want to protect, uh, protect it if you're on the go. So by having this uh, cord organizer, you're able to wrap the uh, cord around and just keep it protected, if, especially if, you're, if you keep it in your bag, um, constantly pulling it in and out. Um, and it just protects it because as you know, these Apple cords um, can get a little pricey. Um, and it's really recommended to use, like I said earlier, the cord and the charging block that are authentically from Apple. Um, chances are if there is a malfunction with your laptop and you're not using the supplied cord and adapter, um, that they'll find some excuse to not fully cover your warranty, especially if it's just that one year limited. So preserving your MacBook's battery life might feel really daunting and time consuming, but don't let it prohibit you from really enjoying your MacBook and enjoying everything it does for you. And also don't let it keep you from hitting that like and subscribe button down below because I drop new videos like this all the time. So until then, see ya.